What's going on everybody, it's Charles. In this video, we are going to be fixing this floppity sloppity shifter in my Mark 8 Golf R. Now, despite the manual transmission being heralded as the greatest thing ever, the Volkswagen one does leave a little bit to be desired. The shifter setup that Volkswagen uses has pretty much been the same for the last 20 years. Good thing about that is there's plenty of things we can do to make it even better. Which is why my man Pauly D's short shifter kit fits pretty much all the six-speed manuals. The best part about this, the installation is super easy, requires just a couple of hand tools. There are a couple of things though that you really gotta pay attention to and do in the proper order to save yourself a headache or two and money and sadness. Paul put one in his Mark A GTI right when he got the car and I got to drive it on an autocross and it made a huge difference in the, well, one time during the race that I shifted the car. The majority of the work that we're gonna be doing is focused right here directly underneath the air box. I'm gonna take a couple of extra things off that you're not gonna need to so that we have room to see what we're doing. We are also going to need to pull up the shifter boot inside the car so that we can set our adjustment properly. We're gonna start by taking our ducting off here on the front, which is two T25 Torx, one on the driver's side and one on the passenger side. There's also right behind the screws, little clips that hold this duct in place. Then we're gonna take our coolant hose out of the retainers here. One and two, and get that guy out of the way. Then pull your ducting back and out. Then we're going to undo our spring clamp here and slide it back onto the boot. These are pretty hard boots, so you don't have to worry about scrunching the boot up. And then go ahead and pull that off. And then you have this little vacuum hose that goes from the air box to the intake manifold that you need to undo. That should, that, sli that slid out easier than I expected. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull our air box out. Be very mindful of this coolant hose. We don't wanna break the fitting, a little bit of Gently manhandling should pop right out. Also be mindful of this drain that's attached to it. It came out really easy with no obstruction, but just be aware that this is down there. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, neutral, reverse, stoplight. With everything exposed and moving the shifter back and forth and up and down inside the car, you really get a good idea of just how floppy all this stuff is under the hood. Now, there has to be a little movement and a little play, otherwise the shift experience would be kind of terrible. But remember, Volkswagen uses this exact setup on the Golf R, the GTI, the Golf, basically every transverse manual transmission for pretty much the last 20 years. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this clip right here and you can just pry up on it a little and slide it off. Be careful because that could go flying if you don't. Then what we can do is we can lift this cable off and squeeze the spring, twist it, and that'll lock it in place. And you can just remove this thing altogether. Then we are going to take the white clip out right here for the other cable. Oh, I dropped it. Where'd it go? I like to leave this cable end attached to the bracket. So we'll do just like we did with the other cable, compress the spring by hand and rotate it. And then pull the cable off the end, slide it all the way back. And you kind of have to rock it up and out. This is how that clip is held in. You can see it goes through the black part right here. And what you really have to do is you kind of have to spread it open and lift it out. Now we're not gonna reuse any of these pieces, but I like to be really careful and try and salvage them just in case we ever need to go back to stock, which means I like to leave that just like that. Next, what we need to do is we need to take this shifter arm off here. There's one 13 millimeter nut that holds it in. Before you go to loosen this nut or before you tighten this all the way, you really gotta make sure your transmission is not locked into place. Before you do anything loosen or tighten, Make sure you can move this back and forth. Go ahead and loosen that. What I do here is one of two things depending on how long this has been in here. If you give it just a little rock back and forth, sometimes that's enough to get it to come off. If it's on there pretty good, I like to take a smaller 13 millimeter socket and set it right on the bolt for the shift tower. Then slide the bracket over so that if you push it down, it's gonna hit the socket. Then. I'll take the extension and socket I used to loosen the bolt, 
Give it a couple taps. That'll loosen that whole bracket. Take your nut off. <laughs> then this whole piece should come right off. If the car's got a ton of miles on it, Sometimes this is a super pain in the butt to take out. This one was pretty easy because this car is basically brand new. Now let's swing over to the bench and assemble our shifter kit. It looks like a ton of parts, but it's really not all that bad. We'll have to take our pin and slide it through our bracket. You see there's a recess here. Then this one giant nut goes on the end of it. We'll tighten that down once we get it in the car. The main thing for this assembly is our two shifter end link brackets. As you can see, there's a bunch of holes, four in one and six in the other. We have to take these small nuts with the nylon ends and set them in place. One of the really great things about this shifter setup is the notch at the back. It makes adjustment in the future super easy. Once you have all the nuts set in those little recesses on the back, we'll take the bolts and we'll just get them started. You do not want to tighten them all the way down here. You just want them started enough where the nut will hold properly inside that recess. I'm convinced this part is probably the longest part of the entire job. You also want to make sure when you put these nuts in that the nylon piece that acts like a thread locker faces out. If you put it upside down, you're probably gonna wreck the bracket and you'll probably never get it tightened. Something else I found too is if you take some masking tape and set it on the bottom, that holds those nuts in pretty well in place. You can even leave that on until you get the end links in the car. And that might make tightening those down a little bit easier. Moving back to the car, let's get our bracket installed. As you see here, there is a tiny indent. That indent indicates a small notch where one of these teeth is missing. This aligns directly to the splines of the shift tower. So we wanna make sure we get that installed correctly. It will really only go on one way unless you force it, so don't force it. The part on the shifter tower where it aligns faces the passenger side. So as you get the bracket installed, it should look just like this. All right, so that's on. And then I like to just put our new nut on there. Get that kind of started. Next up, we need to tighten this nut on the end of our pin here. Then we have to take our plastic slider bushing, slide the inner one on. And remember, you're gonna probably have to walk this in kind of like you did the other one coming out. Get that in there, take the outer one, slide it in. Now we do need to put a clip on here, but before you do that, back the slider out a bit, take the piece that says DAP on it, slide it on, then, because it needs to go on like that. Now this is Delrin, so you shouldn't have to lubricate it. Should be just fine without. Then we'll take the clip, similar to the one we took off the other shift cable, but it came in our kit, and slide that over this pin right here. Now we're good to go there. Now we need our end link brackets. The one that has eight screws in it is going to go on the cable towards the passenger side. Go ahead and slide that on. And then we got a bolt that we need to put in to hold it into the bracket. We don't wanna do anything with tightening these bolts here up just yet. We'll do that in a minute. The end piece that has six bolts in it goes on your other cable. The slider on, and you have this bolt that will bolt it to the bracket. Now, this is basically what this is gonna look like once it's done. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna tighten this 13 millimeter nut. Now, before you go to tighten this, you need to make sure that your transmission shift selector on the transmission is not locked. So this needs to move. If you have this lock where it won't move at all and you tighten this nut, you're gonna break the lock tab, which is not the end of the world, but it's sure a lot easier when you don't break the lock tab. This is also tightened to 25 Newton meters. If you over tighten it too much, you're gonna end up breaking it. Then you get to buy a shift selector, which is no bueno, because you gotta make a repair on your transmission. Nobody wants to do that. Now we torque, boop, and we're good. We're tight in there, I put the thing back in neutral. We can go ahead and tighten these, these two bolts down here. 20 Newton meters is their tightness. There's one. Also, if you're worried about using an extension with a torque wrench like this, don't, it's literally not a problem. This is basically ready to go, minus these guys right here. But before we can do anything with that, we have to go inside the car. Now, if you thought your shifter was floppity before, super floppity. Now it's like driving an air-cooled Volkswagen. What we need to do is we need to remove our shifter boot. It's held in with a couple of clips. What I've found is if you get right along the edge on the driver's side front, you can really just pop it up pretty easily. No tools required. There we go. 
Here's your clips on the driver's side, and here you can see where the boot clips in on the passenger side. When you pull that boot up, you'll see this rubber piece right here. It's super fragile. If you like look at it wrong, it will rip, which is why mine is ripped. But at least that allows me to show you what's going on underneath. This piece right here is attached to the shift rod, and then there's a hole down here that's fixed with the shifter box. And what we need to do is we need to get that aligned to set kind of a base position of our shifter in the car. And that is what this little guy is for. Now there is a divot right there. So you could probably just push through. I'm gonna lift mine up so you can actually see what I'm doing. We'll go in with the pin through the black plastic. Then you're gonna have to line it up. You may have to kind of wiggle the shifter a little bit to get it down in there, but that's gonna that's gonna lock this reasonably into place. Now, as you can see, there's still a little bit of movement in this gear selector. So <laughs> the way to overcome that is to grab the seat belt, wrap it around the shifter, and that will allegedly um, remove any slop in that shifter. You could probably also bungee cord from here to here to actually hold it, because this doesn't seem to hold it super well. But that, that my friends, how it reads in the repair manual. Back under the car we go. Now, this should be loose so that it, we're not gonna pull our cable. This one should be loose so we're not gonna pull our cable. But our shifter in the car is locked. Now we need to move down to this little pin right here. This is going to lock our shift tower into place so that we can set our adjustment. You're probably gonna have to move the shifter a little bit in order to lock it in. So what I do, push it in and then turn it up like that. So it should be facing, if that were a clock, 10, 10 30, between 10 and 11, that's gonna lock our shifter. If, if it only turns up like this, wiggle, wiggle the selector shaft and while pushing in on it, and that should lock it into place. Now, if you look, this is all locked won't go left or right, it won't rotate, and it won't go up and down. Now we need to tighten down all these four millimeter Allens for our shifter end link. What I usually do is I'll tighten two of them on each one, and then we're gonna go back and check our shifter adjustment to make sure it's good. That way you don't have to loosen and tighten uh, each and every time. So if you just do two, that'll hold it snug enough in order to test your adjustment. The torque spec on these is eight Newton meters, so you really don't need to go to town on them. Okay, snug those guys. We'll do these next. Now you can, if you want to, on this cable end link, you can put it the other way if that makes it easier for you. It's not that big a deal, and I think this way just looks a little better. The next step is also critical. Before you go in the car and like do Johnny race car things, shifting through all the gears, you need to unlock the shift tower that we locked. Opposite way of how we did it, just rotate it and you should be good to go. Now you don't wanna go wiggling all this stuff either because we're now attached to the shifter in the car. Make sure your pin is facing down. Now we need to get our super secret special tool seatbelt out of the way. Then we can remove our pin. This may require a little wiggle to get your pin out. Now I leave all this stuff loose until we make sure that the shifter adjustment is right. So now we're gonna shift through gears, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, down, over, up, reverse. If you find that you can't get it into reverse, go back and do the adjustment process again. I have found with this shifter kit, because this is like the fourth or fifth one I've installed of Paul's, the adjustment usually goes perfect on the first time. Then let's get our shift boot down. Oh yeah, now we gotta get something better than this factory knob, which is weird. Now we can go ahead and tighten down the rest of our bolts that we didn't tighten down before. Now you may have noticed that I kind of made a big deal about that locking pin, both on the shifter in the car and here on the transmission. And the reason is, I just want you to make sure you're taking your time when you're doing this stuff and make sure everything's unlocked. Otherwise, what's gonna happen, you're gonna jump in the car and you'll be like, holy shift, this is awesome. And then something's gonna break. And you're gonna say, holy shift for a different reason. 
Now I went ahead and removed the battery tray, which again, is not something that you need to do, but if you did, you should probably put it back in. It did give me the opportunity though, removing the battery to get rid of that ugly battery hold down bracket. Probably void my warranty for that though, right? This is the piece that actually holds the battery down that sits right there. So it holds it on the front and on the side, and then the battery slides in the notch at the back side. It's like the battery, the car could be flying through outer space and the battery's not gonna come out. Your headlight floppy thing will come out, but your battery, never. Look at how much better that looks without that big dumb bracket in there. Now we can go ahead and get our air box installed. Get your boot on, line it up, and satisfying. Put your hose clamp on. We can get our front duct, duct lined up. Oh boy. There we go. Put your little coolant hose guy on. Get in there, get in there. And don't forget to put your little vacuum hose on the air box when you're done. Put our two teeth 25s back in and da 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 da. Oh yeah, get rid of this and we're done. Once you have everything back together, go ahead and take your car on a drive and enjoy that sweet, crisp, holy shift action. But for real though, you do wanna make sure that it goes into all the gears properly. Now, you're probably wondering yourself, Charles, I have a DSG, what the heck can I do? Well, the only thing you can do with your DSG is shorten the shifter yourself. With that, we're out, links down below. Thanks for watching, talk to you again next time. Bye.